Hi, everybody. That's, um, that's a tough act to follow, dancing robots, uh, but I'll do my best. All right, so I'm here to talk a little bit about sustainable growth from the standpoint of a nonprofit. Um, so I'll first share a little bit about what we do and some of the learnings that we've had. So at Somasource, we believe the way to best solve poverty is not through traditional charity, but, but by actually giving work. Um, our model is to move people out of poverty by providing them very specific digital skills training and then hiring them into data services contracts through the internet, con internet economy. So uh, at the core of our mission, we believe that talent is distributed equally, but opportunity often isn't. And the way that we can really meaningfully move people out of poverty on a permanent basis is by providing them access to a job market that oftentimes people living in poverty don't have access to. So what we try to do is we try to equip our, uh, equip our workers with 21st century essential skills. And that specifically means providing skills to work in online work, so digital skills and training, or access to the online job marketplace. For many of our workers at SAMA, uh, the vast majority of them have actually never worked in the formal economy. Most of them are working in the informal economy. And uh, on average, before they join SAMA Source, they're making roughly $2 a day. So what we do to try to bring them into the formal economy is we provide very specific uh, digital skills training, uh, things like internet research. Um, if you're familiar with uh, technologies like game consoles and self-driving cars, uh, they need people to am annotate images before they can actually know what roads, cars, uh, movements, you know, gestures actually are. So we do things like image annotation. These are things that um, are trainable. They're absolutely trainable skills. They don't necessarily require a four-year degree or you know, a computer science uh, education to be able to do these. And they're also things that are incredibly high demand. Uh, we then are able to hire those people um, by having contracts with large companies, uh, a uh, trend earlier was from Microsoft, so Microsoft, Google, the Ebays and Walmarts of the world. And we find that once they're able to get that first job, that job begets other jobs. They're able to move on to higher paying jobs, and ultimately, after they leave our program, after about three years, they are making four times more than they did before, or roughly $8.15 a day. So I'll share with you a little bit about what the informal economy means and, and what it means to, uh, to live on $2 a day. But uh, this is actually a picture um, of the Mathare slum um, that is in Nairobi, and this is where actually many of our workers come from. Uh, the gentlemen uh, that are standing down by the riverbank are making something called changa, which is basically a local uh, toxic moonshine that, believe it or not, is actually made with jet fuel, if you can believe it. This is an example of what the informal economy is. So you can make $2 a day, but you might be doing something like this. And what it really means for many of the people who are living on that on uh, a daily basis is it means informal housing. So where the gentlemen were making uh, Changa, that's actually where most people live. They live in these informal slum settlements that sit right on the outskirts of the city. Um, it's, it's poor nutrition. The majority of our workers, we do copious amounts of data collection to ensure that you know, our, we're, we're actually fulfilling our mission here and targeting the right people. But the majority of our workers are actually uh, eating sugarcane as their primary source of calories because sugarcane's cheap. Um, education, uh, many people are quite talented. They want to go to college, but they have to drop out because they cannot afford the school fees. And of course, last but not least, access to health care when you don't have insurance and you don't have a formal paying job is quite difficult. So fast forward, what does $8.15 a day mean? In San Francisco, that actually might mean a latte, but uh, when you're in a place like Nairobi, as an example, it means moving from the slums, uh, where there's you know, open sewers and a lack of running water, to safe housing. It means spending money on healthy, fruits and healthy uh, foods, such as fruits and vegetables and grains. It means going back to school, which the vast majority of our workers do. And then finally, of course, insurance and access to health care. So I, I, I share all of, uh, all of this to give a little bit of sense about why we do what we do. And now I think I'm going to transition a little bit to some facts that you may or may not know about nonprofits, but probably a lot of facts that you know about startups. So these are all uh, stats that uh, I'm sure people have seen before, but these are actually from the uh, Startup Genome Project. But 92% of all startups fail within the first three years. 74% actually fail in great part due to, uh, due to premature scaling and pre premature investments. You kind of add on top of that some interesting statistics about um, nonprofits. Your average nonprofit actually only has a cash flow of six months. 
if you can believe that after six months that the lights may go out in any given time. And for every one nonprofit, there are roughly 24 profits. So uh, the reason I share all this is because when uh, we had an opportunity to speak here, when you want to talk about lean, uh, lean, uh, <laughs> lean is definitely not only, of course, being a, a, a startup and having limited capital to invest, but also, of course, being a nonprofit. And some interesting uh, challenges that is provided for us in particular uh, is really um, limited access to capital markets. So in a traditional nonprofit with funders, um, you might have a foundation uh, who funds you or you know, an impact investor, but it, it gets confusing when, uh, when you're an earned revenue business that sits in between and they want to know why do you need to spend on sales, marketing, uh, and technology automation and features. And from a traditional for-profit world, uh, by definition as a nonprofit, we're never going to reach the market rates of return. We'll never have, an evalu have evaluation because by definition a nonprofit doesn't have assets. So with these... Um, constraints, basically, it forced us to take a really very specific uh, and very uh, targeted way in which we could grow our business. We had to take a very sustainable approach, because if we did not take a sustainable approach, um, you know, well, I, I should say there wasn't really any other choice <laughs> because of the, uh, the lack of access to capital. So we, we made a few uh, very important and strategic decisions in how we were going to grow our business because by definition, um, you know, we had to have revenue, we had to have business to make the impact we wanted to make. Without selling work, we couldn't create jobs. So uh, the first very, very uh, focused uh, decision was to grow demand before growing investment. And what that really meant is we couldn't just make investments based on the anticipation of demand, we, only, we had to make investments after we actually generated the demand, and only then would we really go and start to invest in adding features to our technology platform. Uh, only then were we able to do some sort of just-in-time hiring. So it really led us down a path of making very strategic investments. Um, so you know, if you, if you have just a limited, amount of, uh, a limited amount of funding, we focus very heavily on sales, marketing, providing you know, an MVP, just the, the minimum viable technology we needed to be able to deliver our services. And after we found that demand, uh, only then did we expand and ultimately grow. This level of focus actually has been very important for us because when uh, you, you lack the access to traditional funding mechanisms, having that very consistent performance of you know, revenue, um, in balance with cost was uh, critically important to us, and it's how we still manage our financials day to day. Uh, this is a picture of Juliet. Juliet actually lives in uh, Gulu, Uganda. Um, but I show this picture because the most, uh, the next most important thing um, about the sustainable growth is that we put the mission above everything. The mission dictates. Uh, how we run our business, the mission dictates our focus. By putting the mission above everything else, it's actually helped us run a leaner and more sustainable business. And what I mean by that is, is uh, again, our mission is to create jobs and to meaningfully lift people out of poverty. There have been plenty, plenty of times, uh, as an example, to where we wanted to grow that revenue. We had an opportunity for a, a lucrative contract, but that lucrative contract might have meant we needed to deliver skills or work or services that were <laughs> Uh, hire or uh, would require us to actually hire people that were not part of our target population. So uh, it seemed like a really difficult decision at the time to turn down what could be uh, what could be an amazing contract or an opportunity to further grow our business. We actually chose to shy away from that because it would actually stray us from our mission of reaching people who need those jobs the most. The second component of it is is that we've had plenty of opportunities, as you can imagine, whether it's uh, governments, NGOs, uh, or interested uh, corporations that believe in this mission, might want us to start, uh, you know, a business in, in, um, for example, in Pakistan or in Central America. And we've tried, we've we've tried those areas, but as soon as we evaluate and say, hey, can we make the impact we want to make? Meaning, can we provide uh, meaningful living wages? If we can't do it, we we again we say no. So it's been uh, having that North Star of our mission has been incredibly helpful in terms of, of keeping our focus. Another lessons learned is total and absolute transparency. 
Um, many uh, companies, especially public companies, have a quarterly earnings call where they talk, of course, about profits, expenses, growth, et cetera. We have what we call a quarterly learnings call. And that's basically where we admit both internally, but to our funders, to our stakeholders, where we're, where we're succeeding and where we're failing. And that, that, uh, that total transparency is not only focused to, to be very uh, ob objective and you know, hopefully in some cases unemotional about making the tough decisions we need to, uh, to make. So uh, we have a big belief in failing, but if you're going to fail, you got to fail fast <laughs> and fail with a very, very specific plan, a plan A and a plan B. So uh, we started in 2008. <clears throat> uh, our founder started this, uh, this program, this business, with a $50,000 grant and uh, literally copies from Kinko's going door to door selling contract services. Fast forward to now, um, we are uh, employing over 1,000 people uh, and growing at any active given moment with, uh, with some amazing, amazing corporations that we get to call our clients. Uh, that's 200 million data tasks performed um, by, by people that you would not expect to be performing them. Uh, projects completed, and, and finally, just recently, we've reached our holy grail of break even by getting to $10 million in revenue. That's really all ultimately amounted to basically uh, nearly 34,000 lives transformed through giving jobs and the families that they support. And you know why we why we came here, why we wanted to, to share this today is that if you, is that well. We literally, uh, and in my old job, we used to say, you know, geez, we're building a product, we're, we're building software technology, it's not like we're trying to solve world hunger. Well, I'm now in a job where we're kind of trying to do that. <laughs> we're actually trying to, uh, trying to solve poverty. It's a big and very complex problem. And while uh, there have been many times, uh, certainly while I've been here, that we wanted to grow and expand because there's so many problems to solve, keeping our eye on the ball, keeping on that focus on sustainable growth is absolutely, absolutely critical because you can't help people if your business doesn't exist. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>